Good morning, Pelham Road. Welcome. We're so glad you're here. My name is Kelly Holdway. I am a very proud third generation member, but I am coming to you from Atlanta, Georgia, where I attend McAfee School of Theology for seminary, and I'm also getting a counseling degree. So I'm sorry I can't be with you in person, but I'm glad to be with you this way. If you're a guest, welcome. We're so excited you're here, and this is a great place to experience faith. So let's get started. Welcome to Pelham Road. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well. With my soul, it is well. With my soul, it is well. It is well with my soul. My sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part, but the whole, is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O oh my soul. my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. And Lord, haste the day when the faith shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resound, and the Lord shall descend, even so it is well with my soul, it is well with my soul, it is well. As we prepare our hearts to pray, let me remind you of a couple of pieces of scripture. Respecting the Lord and not being proud will bring you wealth, honor, and life. For our Proverbs 22, 4. Whoever gives to the poor will have everything they need. But the one who ignores the poor will receive many curses. Proverbs 28, 27. Would you join me as we pray? God, we thank you for allowing us to come into your presence as children. We are mindful of the fact that those who become like children are most fit for this kingdom. We are aware that our love for the least of these is only possible because of your love for them first. I mean, we're parents who love our children, but we are profoundly grateful for the knowledge that you love them more. Make us more sensitive to those you love. Help us to hear the cries that you have heard already. Respond to the needs that you desire to shoulder. Feed the mouths of those who hunger you feel. Make our hearts more tender to those who have yet to be blessed with the abundance of our own blessings. And may your kingdom 
that has come in Jesus be seen in us as we demonstrate your reconciling love to all the people of the world. Amen. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the world thy hands have made, I see the stars. I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior, how to be, how great thou art, how great. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to be. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said this to you. You must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? And Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel? And yet you do not understand these things? Why do we take pictures? We take pictures of birthday parties and weddings and graduations because we believe the photo helps us find our way back to that moment, to that experience. And sometimes it can. We are told that Native Americans uh, were afraid of the camera because they believed the picture stole their soul. The camera may not take the soul, but what it does is it freezes a moment in time. When we take pictures of our five-year-old blowing out the candles on a birthday cake, we capture all of her. It's our best photo that we can take. We capture all that we can see. Yet, is that our little Stacy? Can any one picture tell us who Stacy is? Can her prom photo tell us who Stacy is? Can that picture, that casual picture that we took at her sister's wedding, tell us who Stacy is? Can the picture that she sent us from Rome when she was traveling there tell us who Stacy is? Of course, no one photo can tell us the story of Stacy. All one picture can do, all that one picture can do, 
is capture what can be seen at that moment. And the picture does not ever, does not ever capture Stacy, only an image of her. When we take a photo of a stream that's in the mountains, all we get is an accurate picture of what we saw. We cannot capture the stream because it goes way beyond the viewfinder for sure. So if we want to get a more accurate picture of, say, Stacy, we have to take all of these individual pictures and do something more with them. The only way to get anywhere close to an accurate picture of who Stacy is, well, it's a photo album. And while that is better, it's really not enough. It's not enough to truly understand Stacy, even if we collect all the photos and put them in one place. When you put the birthday picture and her baptism picture and her picture with her first car and that picture she took with her grandmother and all the other special days, when you take all of those photos and assemble them together, well, they, they do tell us a story. They can tell us a story. Yet even now, we must admit we don't know all there is to know about Stacy. But we do know more than any one photo could have said. Now, when the ancients went to explain God, they didn't have a camera. All they had was words. And words were their colors. The pictures they wrote about God were the best pictures they could take at the time. Yet, all one picture can tell us is what they saw at that moment. It cannot tell us who God was. God, like Stacy and like the stream, is just too big for the viewfinder. Thus, trying to explain God with any one description is a bit, um, I guess the best way to put it would be, it's a bit dangerous. Now, the ancients collected these word pictures and called it scripture. These scriptures, or these, excuse me, these pictures, collected by, say, folks like Isaiah and uh, Moses and Amos, are God's photo album. And they tell us about God. Now, sometimes Stacy has curly hair, and sometimes the picture shows her with straight hair, but you could always tell it was Stacy. Likewise, God is sometimes seen at a distance. At other times, he's walking in the garden. But there's no doubt who it is. It's God. During our reading of Scripture, we have many uh, snapshots of God. And if we're not careful, we will confuse God with one of these photos. The picture is the best we can do. It really is. The picture, however, only tells us what others saw at that moment. God is much bigger than what we can feel describe, or even grasp. One snapshot of God is God as creator. Remote, delegating responsibilities, making assignments. Yet on other occasions, the picture is God walking right alongside of us in the garden. There are occasions when God appears to order people to kill others to conquer a land. And yet there are photos of God where God laments all the violence and the death. There are some pictures where you see evil attributed to God and other pictures where it appears to have been outsourced to another. All through the Old Testament, we receive these snapshots of God. The people took the best pictures they could at the time. And while the photo is clearly God, 
it actually tells us more about the writer and what the writer saw than it actually does about God. At times, the faithful writers describe God as a loving shepherd. But then there are times when God is described as a warrior. Now, we desire to make God one or the other. But don't we have pictures of Stacy playing sports and singing in the choir? And if Stacy can be different, then God can certainly be different. The good news for us is that the sheer volume of pictures tells us a good bit about the Almighty. The photo album, while good, uh, I still believe is quite limited. So could there be a way to show us, not tell us, but show us who God is and what God is like now? God decided that there was a way to provide a more complete and accurate picture of who God was. Thus, God sends his son, his own son. And the son will make clear the ways of the father. In Jesus, we have the best picture of God. Not the last, but the best one. In Jesus, we still do not see all there is to see, but our vision improves a great deal. In Jesus, it's like the photographer changed from a standardized film to digital. God is as near as a prayer. God's love is firm but gracious. God is faithful. God is hopeful. With the camera lens on Jesus, the pictures are much more consistent. In these pictures, evil is not from God. God does not send destruction in Jesus. In Jesus, there is life. Remember what is written in John 10? I came so that they may have life and have it abundantly. And then John 3, 17. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Several years ago, here at the church, we read together the 90-day Bible. In the course of these 90 days, I heard more than one of you say, maybe we shouldn't have read the entire Bible. What I heard you saying was that every picture of God contained in the Bible is not flattering. Those of us who wrestle with the Bible on a regular basis knew there were stories in here about fathers offering up their daughters to men for sexual pleasure to keep the peace. We knew there were stories of unnecessary mass violence. We knew there were bloody passages where neither men nor God came off looking favorably. Now, over the course of time, devices have been created to keep churchgoers from seeing this darker side of Scripture. One of the first was stained glass windows. When most of the civilized world was illiterate, the church decided that the best way to tell the story of faith was through art. The pictures we turned into stained glass windows were the stories we believed the people would respond favorably to. You know, Jesus with a lamb draped around his neck, Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. We were even bold enough to tell the story of Jesus' death on the cross and the resurrection. Yet in all of my years and all of my travels, I've never seen a stained glass window of the rape of Diane. And further, to protect young ears, we only tell certain stories to the children. Our curriculum, out of necessity, becomes sort of G-rated. And there's nothing wrong with this, really, except that we spread this G-rating to the rest of the student body, which includes adults. We choose curriculum that inspires and, in some places, indoctrinates, and not material that requires a measure of wrestling and conversation. For some, reading the Bible in 90 days, well, this was the first time that they had read the Bible from cover to cover. And they learned that David doesn't just kill Goliath. 
he kills him and he cuts off his head. And Jahel slays a man by putting a tent peg through his head. And then later she is called the most blessed of tent-dwelling women. In the end, what we hold in our hand is a holy photo album, giving us glimpses of God and God's people. However, the scripture is only what the writers could see. They could not get all of God in the viewfinder. God is too big for our frail and limited imaginations. In the work of Isaiah, God's ways are described as follows. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my way, declare the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. This is why God came closer in Jesus, so we could get a good picture. In Jesus, we had the best picture of what God is like. So what is God like? What does getting close to Jesus tell us about God? Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus at night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you have come from God. Jesus responded and said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless someone is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus responded and said to him, Well, how can these things be? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to judge the world, but so that the world might be saved through him. Behold, that is what our God is like.
God of holy surprises, infuse us with your wild wonder. Attune our hearts to all the ways you dance through the world, from the ordinary to the sublime. Sustain us in the daily practice of opening our eyes to grace. Expand our imaginations to see more deeply and more widely than before. Align us with all the ways you are at work, always extending a new vision when all seems shut down. Help us to experience the eruption of seeds in springtime and that abundant growth as a sign of your generous love. Inspire us to begin again.